At 10 years old, Ashlyn has surprised us. She's a dedicated musician. She spends hours playing the ukulele and bass guitar. She excels in sports and is now making a name for herself playing inline hockey against the boys. She is strong and full of personality. But when we first met her, we weren't sure she would make it out of the hospital. In fact, most of us believe she wouldn't survive at all. As soon as I found out I was pregnant, I was like, I'm getting a treadmill, I'm working out every day. Um, never any morning sickness, nothing like that. Easy pregnancy. Until the last month, I felt horrible. Like, I knew there was something wrong with me. My suspicions were right. We had an ultrasound done, and they said, you know, there's a lot of fluid in your baby. She's not going to make it. Pretty much told us that Ashley wouldn't make it through delivery on Maui. She's yeah. like, you're going on the first air to Oahu. They explained it as a very rare lung condition called hydrops fatalis, where they haven't seen it too many times in the past. Then they found out she ended up having eight holes in her thoracic duct, and that's what kept filling her lungs up, is because there was holes in there. Not, not only going through the situation, but going through the situation with such a rare diagnosis and uh, such an uncertainty of what the outcome might be, I think was probably one of the scariest things. She was born seven, seven pounds, pounds seven, seven ounces. ounces, but they stripped her down to like four, four pounds after her condition was retaining fluid. So they put, they were draining yeah. her fluid out constantly into these basically buckets from each side of her her uh, chest, and uh, that happened for like a good month. Yeah, it was horrible just to watch your daughter have tubes inside of her, you know, and it draining draining out into buckets. It was kind of surreal. <laughs> I remember her case because it's rare and it's fairly dramatic. In other words, the babies that have this are very sick. She wasn't an easy solution either because she had a very bad problem. She basically had holes in those lymphatic channels and it was leaking into her lung spaces and probably in her lungs itself because the, there are lymphatics that go in the lungs. And we actually tried almost everything in the textbook to, to help her. He'd always say I'm what? cautiously, cautiously optimistic. optimistic. <laughs> Okay, well that's a good way of saying you're trying and you're not going to get that. I put a camera in her chest and put some clips and it, it sounds great because it sounds like I was clipping these holes that I could see, but the truth is, is you can't see the holes. I, I was just putting clips where those channels, those lymphatic channels are known to kind of run. Surprisingly, it uh, worked in a fairly dramatic fashion. They, they felt that if, those were the words they would use, if she was able to come home, she'd probably come home on the oxygen or a ventilator of some sort, feeding tube for sure. She did come home with the feeding tube, which came out the very next day, and uh, came home with no oxygen, breathing on her own, which was awesome. She was so strong throughout everything that happened to her in the hospital that we kind of knew she was going to be a strong personality and a strong girl. My friends would probably describe me by careful, um, helpful, caring, nice, a good athlete. They put tubes in me, on the sides of me, to drain off the fluid, and now I'm a butt-kicking hockey player. I had was um, the puck was rolling in front of the goal. I backhanded, uh, um, shot it into the goal, and I went over the goalie's head into the corner of the net. Something about net. She proved everybody wrong. The fact that she might not be able to run, catch her breath. Now she's on the Junior Olympic inline hockey team. Boys junior Olympic and line hockey team smashing it up and uh, getting some great accolades, doing some great things. What we ended up doing and, and having it work, I've um, since applied to quite a few other patients that have had the same problem. And we've actually done, uh, you know, retrospective studies with the uh, Hawaii Pacific Health and published what we ended up doing in Ashland 
for other babies uh, to show other doctors this works because what we tried the first time and probably the second time in her case didn't work and what we finally did was actually what has worked in all the other babies so it's been, it's, it was kind of a rewarding case that way and that's why I remember her well. Pilani is what made that miracle happen, just not the building, but the people inside of it mostly is the doctors and nurses that made it happen. And I think that's what Kapilani is, is it's a, it's a great facility with some cool gadgets, but more importantly, it's got people that care inside of it. Doctors that care, nurses that care. Positive interview. I don't think we'd have Ashlyn. I don't know what our lives would be like. But without Kapilani, I don't think we'd have her.